For most of us, connections with other people, empathy, benevolence, generosity, friendliness, appreciation, and mutual respect contribute to well-being. The pursuit of individual well-being typically includes the pursuit of these forms of sociality, as long as we are not coerced to do so. Voluntary associations and charity could make us happy. There is, however, no way we can engage in philific calculus to estimate social rankings and trade-offs so we can prescribe policies that promote the common good. To see why, let's examine taxation for redistribution. Suppose we take $5,000 from wealthy Peter to pay for poor Paul's braces. Suppose that we have a way of measuring utility so we know that the act will diminish Peter's well-being by 5 utils, while enhancing of Paul's well-being by 10 utils. The outcome is better than the status quo, right? No, the outcome of redistribution is a gain for the recipient and a loss for the taxpayer, nothing more. There is no common scale of value on which the gain for Paul outweighs the loss for Peter. Consequential list proposals to assess his actions on the basis of social outcomes are meaningless. If faced with alternative cohesive government proposals to fix inequalities through redistribution, the question about which overall outcome is the best has no valid answer. Gains and losses for any one of the affected individuals are incommensurable with the gains and losses of other individuals. No best overall judgment exists because the gains to one individual can't be weighed against the losses of another. There is no common currency for these gains and losses and no exchange rate between them. So next time you hear the claim that some overall outcome is the best, ask best for whom? So what follows from the fact of the separateness of persons and the conclusion that there can be no moral balancing? According to Nozick, the fact that his is the only life he has is a reason to be constrained in your conduct towards your fellow man to avoid treating him as a means to your own end. Normal people understand the difference between a mere object and an entity with ultimate ends of her own. If you honestly profess not to see how anything about a person provides you with reason not to murder, enslave, rape, rob, or defraud her, you have a defect characteristic of psychopaths. We respect the rights of others not by promoting their ends as we do our own, but by not sacrificing them to our ends. Rights stand as fundamental principles for ordering human relations among diverse individuals who may not endorse each other's chosen ends or conceptions of well-being.